Everyone in the service industry has a story. Crazy customers, wild orders, and WTF moments. Do you want to start a tab? The podcast here to bring you those tales from behind the bar. My name's Carl, and I'm pooped. My name is Riley, and I am also tired. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why we're a little tired is uh, the brewery that I worked at, we had a little pool party. The owner had a pool party, and a lot of people that I haven't seen for a while that just know we all know each other. We all had a good time. Everybody showed up, drank a little bit too much, did a little bit of afties after that. And we went to a dive bar that we had never been to in our kind of neighborhood. Yeah. And it was fun. It's actually, actually not that bad of a little neighborhood bar. Mm-mm. So we'll probably go back at some point, but not anytime soon. Right. And since what we usually do on this podcast is we read stories about the hospitality industry, rate them, talk about them, and all that other fun <laughs> stuff. But today... We are going to do something a little different with a returning guest. We have Billy. He was on a couple episodes ago. He actually wasn't that long ago in the episode count-wise. It doesn't look that long, but it actually is because we've been missing a couple weeks. But today we're going to talk to Billy about his journey about competing in the world-class bartender. What's the, what's the official title of the competition? So it is a US, the U.S. world-class sponsored by Diageo. Um, competition oh gosh i can't remember the exact there's like a very specific phrasing that they use for branding purposes right um yeah, yeah. well first Sponsored of all Diageo, wel- world class welcome back billy nice to great have to you on you. again great to be back taking time on your monday evening but uh so yeah he entered the competition which i did also but i did not make it past the first round because uh like always carl waits the last minute to do everything and just Fucked it all up, which is perfectly fine. But anywho, we're not talking about me. We're talking about him. So Yeah, but what? one of us ended up owning a bar at the end of this, and the other didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I mean, that's a, con- that's a good consolation prize, I think. So, But uh, actually, the last time you were on, you were waiting to see if you got into the top 100, I believe, right? Because the next day is when you got the email saying that you got the top 100. Top 30. Top yeah, 30. It was, uh, yeah, so... Oh, that's right. It's, yeah. it's funny how the timeline worked. Um, I was on the show. We recorded on a Monday. That Tuesday, I had to, uh, I had to travel up to um, up by Chicago for my day job. And we had left it on this cliffhanger. We like, next time, you know, by, by tomorrow, I'll know. Because we, we, we knew that the, the announcement was coming the next day. Uh, if I was making it top 30 or not. And my goal was to either go into the city and uh, celebrate or go into the city and uh, drink my sorrows. Mm -hmm. And I ended up doing neither. I ended up drinking uh, half a pint of Remy uh, cognac in my hotel room because there was a shit ton of tornadoes in in East Chicago. So, yeah. (laughs) So I went nowhere and got really drunk and ate Costco pizza and drank cognac to celebrate in a hotel room. In, Gar- <laughs> in, in like Gary, Indiana. Night. So uh, I guess let's first backtrack for people who don't know what this competition is. Um, sure. It's a competition. Uh, well, why don't you let him tell us what it is? Okay, go ahead. Because he Billy. competed. I did technically too. Um, so the competition is, it, it's an international competition. There are, I believe, 60 countries that actually compete. And each country is treated as a region where they do... Um, a series of challenges uh, to find the quote unquote best bartender in that country. Um, It starts out with a, uh, an open call, uh, which we actually just had the open call um, in July for this next year um, where bartenders can submit a, a drink based off of a specific prompt. Um, Those, uh, those drinks are that first round, the drinks are judged on paper. Uh, so nobody ever actually tries that drink. So it's it's your it's your ability to uh, to portray that drink through uh, through written word. Um, the top 100 is uh, is selected from that, and they're given a whole new challenge um, where they go through another uh, another several months of putting together um, this specific challenge. Uh, in my case, the the first round, um, which you and I both went through was creating a variation on a classic, um, but kind of our interpretation. Um, the second round was creating a four drink menu based on a, uh, a, an occasion of your choosing. So any, any occasion where a, 
cocktail menu may be present, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, so from that, uh, you wait way too long. <laughs> uh, so you just get a stress about that and all the anxiety that goes with it um, until they announce the top 30. Uh, eventually they an announce the top 30 where those, uh, those, can, those, uh, those competitors will actually go on to the live round. So um, this year it was in Denver um, and they flew all 30 of us out to Denver for it. Uh, but you had several months. So we found out in February. Um, it that wasn't until June. Um, mm -hmm. And we had basically from February till May to submit all of our challenge plans. Um, they give you all the, uh, all the, basically all of the, all, all of the competition, um, all of the challenges that you're going to be doing in Denver. And you have to submit all of your plans so that they have all the ingredients you need, all the prep, everything. Um, yeah, and so uh, that's just, you know, a bunch of work, a bunch of uh, research and development, um, putting things together. Uh, then you, uh, everybody lands in, uh, in the host city for that. Uh, like I said, this year it was Denver. Um, and everybody competes um, through different challenges. They're all randomly selected. So one day you may have one challenge, the next day two. Uh, but there was three challenges uh, to get into the top 10. Top 10 had two more challenges after that. I did not make the top 10. Um, sadly, uh, and it's largely in part to the fact that I did not, uh, finish the speed round properly. Uh, <laughs> that was a failure. Uh, but yeah, so there's three challenges, um, that you go into for the top 30. Um, this year it was a, a, a kettle one, uh, kettle one challenge and a Ron or no kettle one. Yeah. And Ron Zacapa, uh, rum. Okay. And yep. then the, uh, the famous speed round. Uh, this year, the speed round was basically kind of a mirror of the uh, second round where you had to create a menu uh, for an occasion of your choosing. Uh, the only um, the only kind of like gotcha for that was you created five drinks and then right before the timer starts and you had eight minutes to complete your five drinks plus a mystery sixth drink that they would <laughs> flip over a card and you just, and it was from a list of, uh, of classic cocktails. So you kind of knew like, okay, it's going to be a, um, you know, a Manhattan <laughs> or, or this or that, or my dog barking in the background. Um, <laughs> you know, it could be one of, of, of about 10 classic cocktails. Um, this, uh, this one was, give me one second. Yep. Our cats are perking up like, what is that thing? Uh, it sounds like somebody was knocking on the door next door. So dog decided to freak out. Um, right. So, yeah. So in this case, um, it was, uh, I, I chose to do a uh, quote unquote world-class pool party. So okay. all of the drinks had to kind of speak to that menu. Um, and then my mystery cocktail was a mojito. Um, <laughs> So drinks that, so it's all, it's, it's all going to be like a classic cocktail that any bartender should really know. Um, it's kind mm -hmm. of like that lexicon of, of classic drinks. Um, yeah. So that was, that was that, um, the top 10 got two more challenges the next day. Um, and those were, uh, um, based off of, uh, one was based off of like a food pairing, uh, okay. where all of the contestants, um, the of the top 10 went into a uh into a a, a secluded room uh, it was actually our prep room that we used for for prep the entire uh weekend when we were there and they had a um a plate with a dish or they had like a dish in front of them with a with a cover they had to un they had to like lift that up and then they had like two hours to create a drink based off of that dish like a, a pairing for that specific food item but they could not leave the room. Wow. So once you left the room, that was your time you were done. So, um, and then the other one was based off of the four, uh, the four kind of elements of Johnny Walker. Okay. Um, and yeah, so then, uh, based off of, uh, off of those two challenges, uh, again, randomly selected, um, in, in the order in which you, uh, presented, um, they, uh, crowned the winner. Um, the winner this year was, uh, 
the bitter gringo out of uh out of seattle uh jonathan stanyard awesome dude uh he will be representing the u.s at the um uh at the worlds uh which will be in shanghai in september that's awesome that's uh very cool yeah that's awesome and also a lot of work so let's let's kind of step back and do you remember the drink that you first submitted just to open the competition up with you know like with the general one yeah so the uh so again the initial um the initial prompt was to do a uh, a signature riff or a variation on a uh, classic cocktail uh, i went with a it was kind of like a hybrid of a uh, an army and navy sure uh, and a whiskey sour a uh, whiskey sour is actually the drink that got me into cocktails so uh an army and navy is one of my favorite drinks so i kind of felt like it was a great way to do a spin on the two. Mm-hmm. Um, the drink I made uh, is called the Afterglow. And um, so the whole competition is sponsored by Diageo. So you're using Diageo, um, uh, their reserve uh, spirits um, as the base. And then uh, Diageo owned brands um, for most of it. There was a few that weren't Diageo, but they're within that. Uh, they're kind of like Diageo adjacent, I guess. Right. Um, so for this, I used, uh, I used bullet rye. Um, I used orgeat, uh, instead of lemon, um, as you would see in an army and Navy or a whiskey sour, I used a acid adjusted grapefruit juice. So, um, kind of lowered the pH balance to that of, uh, of lemon. Um, then I used uh, a little bit of Campari and a, uh, a red verjus, um, okay. which for anybody that doesn't know what that is, that's uh, kind of like uh, the the grapes that they cull uh, before the harvest uh, at a at a winery or like a vineyard. Um, those grapes usually are trash. Um, some uh, some wineries have taken to uh, pressing those grapes um, and making a juice out of them, and so it's like a non-alcoholic. Really, kind of takes the profile of like of a vinegar, um, okay. but it's uh, wine grapes. So it's still going to have some of that acidity. It's going to have uh, a lot of those tannins that you would, uh, that you would see in a wine. Um, it's just unfermented, non-alcoholic. So that was the drink that I made. Um, and that's what got me into the top 100. Nice. And then for the top 30, so you had to create a menu, right? Or, yeah. and that's what you did the, the pool party, the pool. No, not for the top 30. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. No, so, so the pool party was for was uh, the, part of the top 30 right. to get into the top 30. We had to create a, uh, a four drink menu. Um, three of those drinks were going to be paper judged. Again, nobody was ever going to taste them. Uh, so it was really how you uh, how you told the story of those drinks through the menu. Um, mm-hmm. If we back up to the initial uh, the initial cocktail, um, there's a lot of it really boils down to how you answer the questions like the essay questions on it. Right. This next one was how you portrayed the flavors of your drinks through the menu design itself. So how, uh, and, and, and you actually had to create a, um, a menu design. So whether it be a PDF or, or um, you know, something in Canva or whatever, um, it had to be a visual menu that they could look at. And how did you portray those drinks through that visual medium? Um, Interesting. So like the descriptors of it. The one thing about that is uh, you had to choose one drink from that menu that was actually going to be recreated um, by a panel of judges. Um, and I can't remember how many judges it was. You can go back and look at the stories on uh, World, uh, World Class US uh, mm-hmm. on Instagram. And there is a, uh, there's a couple of videos of judges uh, all coming to New York City and bartenders making all of the drinks so for for all 100 people um that were all 100 that were named uh for top 100 uh one drink was made and judges tasted them and then from that uh they chose uh the top 30. so my menu was um so my wife and i and our family we moved to indianapolis from california in the middle of the pandemic Mm -hmm. Uh, it was july of 2020 uh, the menu theme for that was, um, uh, it was actually called, it's not goodbye. It's, uh, it's see you later. And it was basically a going away party. Um, nice. I planned the, uh, because we didn't really get to have one, uh, um, right. 
I planned each one of the drinks based off of each stop that we took on the road trip out here. So uh, our initial, like the first drink was based off of home, right? So the central coast of California. So it was very much uh, geared towards the, uh, the kind of like agricultural side of California. So strawberries, agave, um, it was, it was uh, uh, Don Julio, um, strawberry. I don't remember what else was in it. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you know, at, at the end of the day, like, you know, at the end of the day, I made all of these drinks, but three of them were never getting touched, right? They were, they were never going to be made. Right. Um, that one was a, was a paper cocktail. So um, I made it uh, to make sure it, it made sense. Um, the second, uh, the first stop, so home, first stop was St. George, Utah. Um, I decided to use Utah as kind of a, uh, like a non-alcoholic uh, because seed lip is, was one of the uh, reserve spirits, spirits we could use. Um, right. so I did a non-alcoholic for that. Uh, the next stop was Kansas city. So I did kind of like a smoky, uh, Johnny Walker cocktail. Um, yeah. again, uh, made all, made that one as well. Um, and then the final stop was, uh, Indiana where I again went with, uh, with bullet rye cause that's made it at MGP. So it's that Indiana rye and kind of tied all that in together. Uh, that is the cocktail that actually got um, that got made by the judges. Uh, okay. it, w- it was kind of fun to uh, to go back and watch the video and see them actually making it because uh, it's the only one that actually used yellow chartreuse in the cocktail itself. Um, so it was like rye, yellow chartreuse. I can't remember the rest of it now. It's been <laughs> almost a year at this point. Okay. Right. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so that was that was round two, and that was to get named. That that round there was the the top one hundred. Um, like I said, they judges tried it all, and then they pared it down to the top thirty. That's awesome. That I I've always enjoyed doing like theme cocktails. Like anytime I've competed in the Iowa State, like the years I won, it was a whole theme that I just decided my theme to be around, and it just mm-hmm. seems to tell a better story than trying to just make four random drinks. And it's like, well, how did you get from point A to point B? You know. And, oh, absolutely. And that's what I've told every competitor in there. I'm like, you should, all the drinks should tie into each other. Cause then when you're talking about the drinks in your 20 minutes, while well, you got to make them all, it makes it easier to talk about them because now you're just segueing into each one a little easier, but exactly. You know, you know and when you have a story to tell with them, you know, when you're making those drinks and, and it's a, you know, like, like in that, in that menu theme, uh, of it being kind of like this, uh, this road trip and this going away party. You, know, you get to tell people, you know, like, yeah, this was, uh, you know, we moved, uh, we, we moved cross country in the middle mm-hmm. of a pandemic and these are the stops along the way. And, and, and the, that whole menu just really speaks to that road trip, um, right. which I thought was, which I thought was actually a really fun, um, was a really fun concept. I struggled hard getting out of my own head, uh, mm-hmm. with coming up with a theme and it got to the point where it was just like, all right this is the theme it doesn't matter just do it right. um because you know you know you look at it and you're like oh do you want it to be a birthday party an anniversary party a divorce party a pool party you know anything and you're like gosh just fucking pick something mm-hmm. but i mean and so that's probably, ended. yeah but that's probably a little bit than doing just a generic pool party or divorce party like picking something that you experienced and that you could tie into personal experience not just a random theme you know like yeah. these are all halloween drinks okay well that's kind of a generic theme to go with but when you pick something that specific it, right. it, it, then you make your drinks can hit a little harder right like you're anything like food wise you're just thinking about it a little bit more you're putting a little bit more passion into it i think you know that's what i believe so but yeah yeah i mean i definitely like the concept for sure i'm interested in trying that yellow chartreuse drink we only have like half a bottle left so i'm b- being very particular stingy with, with it. stingy with what i like i just want a bunch of naked and famouses but i'm like well <laughs> you know not gonna but, do that yeah let me pull up this back real quick because i have it on my phone somewhere um while we're while we're talking i'll pull it up here so you got the so you got the email or whatever that you're in the top 30 and then you had a couple months well february to june i think right so you had yeah three months but then how soon did you have to get the the stuff to them like a month out or something oh yeah it was about a month out 
um, cause they wanted to, they wanted to make sure that they had, um, that they were able to source everything that you needed. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like, so the, the kettle one and the Ronza Kappa challenges were, um, they provided the kettle one and the Ronza Kappa, mm-hmm. um, but any homemade ingredients for both of those you had to provide. Um, so, you know, you're traveling with, you're traveling with luggage that is full of just syrups and you know random liqueurs and whatever it is you you know you're taking um how did you get that through <laughs> oh you check oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's just check it. yeah you just check it um here we go. i got that that drink here so it was a uh, bullet rye uh sue's uh, yellow chartreuse honey and a little bit of citric acid and saline nice um, but yeah, so you just, you know, you check a bag, um, everything's bubble wrapped and you know, they, they say basically to, um, to put everything in cheater bottles, uh, and do two of each. So in right. case something breaks in transit, the, yeah. the fun part about that, you know, the Ron Kappa one was, and, and I may be jumping ahead here. Um, that was like that, uh, I, you know, I always tell people it was like the kind of the drink masters, um, you know, showing Netflix is like the drink masters drink where it was like fully immersive. So like it was all about presentation and mm-hmm. telling a story through that drink. So like I, you know, I did a, a, a Zacapa drink and, and the theme was a uh, house above the clouds. Right. So I had, um, you know, I made this platform out of raw sugar cane. Um, it was served on a tray with some black sugar that looked like a, like, you know, like lava sand, um, uh, rum infused cotton candy that I made uh, around that platform. So it was like a cloud and the cocktail was presented on top of that. Uh, so it was like, you know, that basically from the, from the soil to the cocktail, um, to the right. glass was, awesome. was like the idea on that. So, you know, I'm traveling, I've got, you know, cotton candy in a Ziploc bag. I've got, um, like that drink had like an Amontillado sherry and a, and a cordial. So that's all being, you know, I'm traveling with that. I'm traveling with, uh, um, cordials for the kettle one competition, like, like all your glassware. Cause you can use the glassware that they provide, which is just very generic or, but like, mm-hmm. if, if you have like specific glassware you want to use, um, you have to bring that. So it was just, it was wild. Dude, I can imagine like, cause they paid for it. All right. So you could have checked as much shit as you wanted to, or, um, actually, no, uh, they didn't pay for check bags. I mean, they gave us, I, I will say they gave us a, um, like a gift card after the fact, uh, sure. like a prepaid gift card. Um, but yeah, that wouldn't, it wouldn't have covered like some people I like some people I saw brought a lot of, um, a lot of stuff. There was one, there was one, uh, contestant she brought, um, or one competitor. She brought this custom made glassware for the, uh, for the Zacapa, uh, challenge. It was like hand, it was a hand blown, uh, martini glass that the base was a cloud <laughs> and like she brought two of them and one broke. Oh. So she's like super gluing it back together, like in our prep area, just hoping that it holds long enough to present her drink. And that's it. Oh, man. Yeah. If, if I had made it to Denver, I would have just fucking drove the 12, 14 hours. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, I kid you not. I looked at my wife as I was, as I was packing my luggage and I was like, I don't know if it would be cheaper for me just to take the day off from work, uh, get a rental car and just drive. Yeah. On the way back, I didn't give a shit what happened to my, uh, to, to anything like my glassware, everything was like, I mean, most of it was like, most of my glassware was, was from like thrift stores, my goodwill and stuff. There was my, some glassware was from like an antique shop, but it wasn't expensive. Like Mm -hmm. if it broke, it broke. I didn't care. Uh, once I got through the competition, right. You know, I was just like, dude, I, I like, I, I remember leaving some stuff in Denver in the hotel room, um, like, <laughs> like rocks glasses that I, that I brought that they were very specific, um, like footed rocks glasses that I actually got at Ikea. Yeah. Um, and I was like, dude, I have like 10 of these at home already. I don't care if these come back with me. Right. <laughs> and I just left them there. Yeah. So. Damn. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I guess that's kind of like 
with us living directly in the middle of the United States, we could almost drive anywhere. I mean, unless it's like Seattle or fucking something, but like, I mean, for time right. wise, but yeah, I don't know, but that's awesome. Um, so when you got there now, how many of these other 20 contestants, did you ever meet any of them before or are these 20 new fresh faces that you are about to go meet and hang out? And how was that part of the journey? Cause that's always the part I've always liked is the competition's fun. I love that part, but meeting new people, you know, there was one competitor that I competed with um, when I did Patron Perfectionist, or excuse me, earlier in the year. Um, I uh, competed with her. She was out of, she's out of Chicago, um, and I competed with her in Austin yep. uh, for, for, for with Patron. So it was really cool having that one face of somebody that I already knew um, from a competition side. Uh, that mm -hmm. was really cool. The 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 really rad thing about the way they do world class, um, it coincides in the same city with uh, the USBG Nationals. Okay. Um, they do that most years. Um, I think last, not last, not last year, but the year before, uh, they were indifferent for some reason. Uh, but they usually do it in the same years. Um, but uh, so I ha actually had a lot of friends from like the Indianapolis chapter of the USBG there. Okay. And they came to every challenge. They were there nice. for every single one to cheer me on. That's awesome. So I had and, a really uh, good, really good showing for that. <laughs> yeah. Here in Iowa, I'm in the, uh, the, whatever category they call that chapter where we're just on our own because there is no chapter mm -hmm. in the state mm -hmm. of Iowa. So like we're the loners, <laughs> but whatever, it's fine. Um, no, but, and then I know, cause I know when you both, when you made it and then next week we're going to have John on of the Bard Tenders podcast, he was in the top 30. I know I messaged both of you like, Hey go talk to this person. You know, you got both of you have been on the podcast, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, and John's awesome. Um, I was telling you before the show, you know, before we started, um, my wife and I hung out with, uh, with John and Becky at, uh, at the USBG, uh, gala. Um, and we sat together at dinner and, and just kind of caught up and debriefed on the whole thing. And he's right. going to have some, he's going to have some real fun, interesting stories. Um, I don't know if he's if he's you know, spilled the beans on some of the things he went through with you, but uh, he had he had he had some he had a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it out of him. But uh, how? Okay, so you arrive in Denver. So your wife went with you, right? Uh, yeah. So my my wife went with me. Um, they do uh, they did a a plus one for Denver. Okay. So she uh, she flew out, um, and uh, and hung out with me. Actually, no, they didn't do a plus one. We, we ended up paying for that. What? They didn't do a plus one for for uh, world class. I had to pay for that, right? To you're fly you out? My flight, yeah. yeah. But so then they paid for... You were at the hotel and the dinner. So, sure. yeah, so all the challenges, um, she was she was there. But, yeah, she uh, we had to pay for her flight, but that was it. Yeah, yeah, I get pretty expensive. 60 people fly out from all over right. all over the United. Who was the, who was the furthest away, you think? I mean, Probably Seattle's Florida, got, Florida, Florida, yeah, Florida, yeah, yeah. to Denver. I mean, there was a Chris was, yeah, I think Chris is Florida, and he was probably the furthest away. New York, maybe. Yeah, but I think probably Florida was the was the furthest. Okay, so you get to Denver, you know, you fly in, you get your shit, all your, how many ever boxes among boxes of crap you had. Then it was it just got to go to the hotel and and what was kind of like the day to day. Yeah, so flew into Denver. Um, we my flight was actually pretty early. Um, I um, had the <laughs> the the fortune of being on the same flight as um, uh, a couple of our USBG uh, like chapter board members, um, and one of them is uh, like our regional Diageo rep. Okay. Um, so we were all on the same flight, and, he, and we were going to take the uh, we were going to take the train from the airport downtown. And he was like, "Screw it, I'm just going to pay for an Uber." So we Ubered in into the hotel. Couldn't check into the hotel early. Um, we had like a few hours to kill. So we fly in, uh, get to the hotel. Uh, we walked to go get lunch. Um, get back to the hotel, and uh, like a couple hours later, there's a um, like a meet and greet with all mm -hmm. of the uh, all of the competitors kind of like this like get to know each other type of deal that was sponsored by um Ron Zacapa and Mr. Black. No, it's just just uh, Zacapa. 
Um, so there was a, a couple of uh, industry icons there, like serving drinks. Like uh, if you're familiar with uh, uh, Lynette Moreno, um, she was she was like pouring uh, Zacapa XO for everybody. Um, nice. They had and uh, they had some really cool like uh, kind of like icebreaker games. Um, they made almost like baseball cards of everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, gave each person like a stack of five, and you had to go like find like the person that you had their card for, and like there was like some like icebreaker questions on it, and you know you would exchange cards so that you would come back with a with you know a stack of your own, and it was really cool. Um, and then we went to dinner. Um, I'm trying to remember that dinner was no 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 that first night we had um we had the meet and greet we had an hour in prep just to like our 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 prep area sure to go over like what was in there and like kind of a a briefing and do any prep that we would need for the next day um and then we had that night all to ourselves uh so we could do whatever we wanted um myself and and uh um, a bunch of friends from um from Indy, we all went out to a few bars around Denver. Uh, we went to Hell or High Water Tiki, uh, went to Yacht Club, kind of just had a good time. Um, my wife flew out actually the next day because my mother-in-law was in town um, and flew out that Sunday as well. Oh, wow. So yeah, so, um, so yeah, so that was that. Uh, that was the first night. Uh, the next morning where we have to be down in prep at like 7.30 in the morning to start the day so, so like all the so bartenders many, are like what the fuck so how many of you 30 went out and stayed out super late do you think oh most of us, most of <laughs> us. We, yeah we we went into that in that first day of competition like hating life right um personally myself i did not go out and drink like super heavily the night before right um like we went like we finished the night at yacht club and um if you're not familiar with yacht club they were just a uh, name to the best uh, cocktail bar in the u.s at tales of the cocktail this year there you go um we went there um and i had a couple of drinks but nothing like super crazy um came back uh just kind of hung out drank a lot of water that night i knew that i didn't want to get like super shit faced and, and be like hung over the next day mm-hmm. um so but we didn't get back to the hotel until probably 130. Um, I mean, I would and be then, doing the same you know, thing. No, you you wouldn't have been mindful about what you were drinking. You'd have been like, "Oh, I'm at this great cocktail bar. I'm going to try everything." No, I would have been buying shots for everyone and just <laughs> giving, <laughs> and giving myself shots of water. Like, hey, cheers, no, you everyone. would not have been. I it was. Think I would. I, I will say it was. Uh, it, it was a great time. Um, that place knows how to throw a party. Yeah. Um, for being just a. It ran like a, a Sunday night. Was it Sunday? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of Saturday or Sunday. Um, can't remember the 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 exact timeline at this point. But it was a uh, you know it was it was a awesome bar, awesome time. A lot of people there. A lot of people from world class were there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was very cognizant of of what was happening the next day, so I didn't want to be mm-hmm. like hungover and just in really rough shape. There were right. a couple of us that were very much hung over and in a very rough shape <laughs> that would have been carl <laughs> but we had a good time um That's next awesome. day um you know call was like i said it was like eight o'clock in the morning um they served us breakfast down by the prep room uh which was awesome it's just kind of like a catered breakfast we had breakfast um and then we went and had prep you know we had prep time get everything ready uh by this point everybody had their schedule so we mm-hmm. knew like what our day was going to look like. Um, like I said, everything was like randomized. So um, first day I had, uh, I had two challenges. I had uh, both the Zacapa and the, um, and the uh, uh, Kettle One. Yep. Um, so I got to knock those two out. Um, one was actually, I think I was like the third, the third Kettle One and then like the eighth Zacapa that day. Mm-hmm. So I got to knock mine out pretty early, and then you just get to hang out and watch other people 
do their thing. Uh, they did have different brands doing um, like different installations around the hotel. So you could get like cocktails from a, like, uh, like Bullet had a bar set up. Johnny Walker had a bar set up. Mr. Black had a bar set up. Um, so you could just go get cocktails from all those. And it's just kind of like, you know, just a, a almost like a bar crawl, but uh, just having a really good time. Um, and watching, you know, these new friends compete. Right. Um, so competitions are done. Uh, we go to um, Death & Co. that night um, in the Death & Co. in Denver. Um, they had a they had the garden like rooftop bar like all completely blocked off. Um, and they did uh, Kettle One did a sponsored thing where we had like a welcome cocktail. Then we all did, and this was the coolest thing. Um, and if you if you follow Jake behind bars on um, on Instagram, he was the bar manager at Death and Co. He's since left, but he this was like his last kind of event that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, he did this really rad where thing where every every competitor and everybody that was there, so there was a bunch of industry icons there um, as well. But everybody sat down and they had a uh, piece of paper in front of them with a with a ton of uh options on it and we got to create our own martini um so basically it was like you know do you want stir do you want shaken do you want gin you want vodka do you want this you want that how do you want your martini and then they brought out every single person there was probably at at least 50 people Mm -hmm. an individual martini that we all made at the table that's awesome Um, so it's really really cool it was super fun um, the way they did that. Uh, yeah, but this, you know, sponsored by Kettle One. Uh, so, we, you know, had a great time. Uh, and then we just back to the hotel. Um, went back to the hotel. Um, competed the next, get, you know, same thing the next morning. Um, early, early call time, breakfast. Uh, and then that was, you know, whatever competition, you know, whatever challenges you didn't do the day before, you did that day. Mm-hmm. Um, Got through all of that. Uh, I had just the speed round. I failed miserably at it. Um, I did, however, <laughs> at one person said, just put a drink in front of them. So I handed the judges like my drinks still in the shaker tin and in the <laughs> mixing glass, literally just threw them in front of them. Um, right. said, Here's something. Right. Um, but, you know, didn't have the presentation, didn't have, you know, every, everything I wanted and you know, definitely uh, learned from that. Uh, that. That was very humbling. Um, what, what, I guess let's, in case someone doesn't understand what a speed round means, like uh, explain what you, I mean, you explained earlier, you had to basically make five drinks in eight minutes, correct? Uh, it was actually a total of six. So our menu was five drinks and then they okay. gave you a sixth drink okay. as a mystery cocktail. Right, that's right. Uh, and that was here. what you, um, that was kind of like the on the fly drink from right. the list of classics. So when you think about, um, you know, it, it, when you think about making six drinks in eight minutes, you know, like everybody says like, oh, well, that's, you know, I could totally do that. That's easy. Um, they judge technique on that. So, you know, how are you building that round properly? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your, your orders, your order of service, you know, how do those drinks, um, you know, how do those drinks taste? How do those drinks look? The presentation on it, you know. My big thing, and, and this was uh, somebody, you know, somebody, one of my friends actually yelled at me, you, you have two hands, was I wasn't shaking two cocktails at once. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I thought I had more time than I actually did. And you have a little clock that you can like look at, see where you're at. I thought I was going to be fine. I was not fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that's the speed round. Um, it, and that changes it, every year, like the the... Right how they do that. I've seen, um, I probably somebody that said like they had like, uh, it was like 10 drinks, but it was like all like three, uh, like three ingredient drinks. Oh, but again, right. you know, you, you're basically, you, you know, you're punishing yourself if you get like too creative on the speed round. Uh, um, right. you know, because a lot of it is like, you know, your well is set up exactly how you want it. So you get, you get a couple of minutes before the speed round to set up your well exactly how you want it. Mm-hmm. But if you know if you're throwing in drinks in there that are five six touches, right? You know, that's going to hinder you. 
And you also are explaining your cocktails at the same time, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. You're yeah, talking it's, about it's, it. You're answering questions. Like, it is live fire. Not oh just, yeah. I'm building these cocktails. Yeah, you're not just you know you know head down service well you know making cocktails. You're having to talk to the judges and you're interacting. And you know, I made the mistake of talking to uh, talking to people out in the crowd and getting them hyped up and making jokes. And you know, I, I took the banter probably a little too far. Um, <laughs> right. But it's you know it, it's it, it's a really good um, it's it's a really good show of how you are as a bartender on a Saturday night at six p.m. seven p.m. eight p.m. right mm-hmm. you know, just getting your ass kicked um, you know two three four deep uh, just having to just make drinks but also still ten bar right can you can you talk and also remember what specs you're putting in which ten right now exactly like you're not you're not pouring a Maro no Nino in your mojito. Right. I bet that oh, would taste fucking good. That, that, sound, that sounds like a very was, specific example. I'm sure, was, I'm sure it was great. I'll ask uh, I'll ask Charles Jolie how it was. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean at the I, what's funny, first of all, I think are you the one that recommended the the build book? Like how to build uh, uh round building, yeah. 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 And so I, I know when you said you when you text me or tell me like I got fucking destroyed on that. I'm like, aren't you the motherfucker that told me about the book on how to build <laughs> how to do it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a li- it's a lot different when you're looking at a clock and you got eight minutes and you've oh, got right. a three judges staring at you and everybody cheering you on. Oh boy, yeah, right. no, I, and, I, I and get... you have an audience that are actually just watching you, not people drinking at a bar. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you, you know, we always talk about how you know getting behind the stick is kind of like theater right you know you just you know everything is different about you as a person yeah nothing prepares you for that moment Mm -hmm. except for being in that moment Mm -hmm. um you know having the judges you know because it's near impossible not to notice that the judges are writing things down while you're shaking a cocktail or you're uh you know you're jiggering technique because that is the stuff they're looking at it's wild you're like holy crap like they you know like you know, they told me flat out, like feedback was, was fantastic on this was, you know, I, I did pour Amaro and Nino in my, uh, in my, in my mojito. So I had to remake it, but I was like, Whoop, that doesn't go in there. And they're like, yeah, you never should have said that because nobody would have known. Right. <laughs> yep. But boy, you, when... you put that out there and now yeah. they know. Right. I know when I worked at the road lounge, there'd be times, but like you said, Saturday night, I'm trying to build six cocktails at a time and talking and I know there's been a couple times like, oh, there's a little bit too extra of this and that. But like, if I don't say anything, no right. one will fucking ever know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This drink tastes different the second time. You're yeah. just drunk. You're just drunk. <laughs> just drink some water. You'll be fine. Yeah, you want a shot just... from that? Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> now you can taste nothing. Now you, now you can, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, here's, here, here, what... here's fucking Everclear. Shut up. Right. right. You just want to get drunk anyway. And that's what right. I tell people for the competition – because it's the same thing. I had never done anything. When I did the state, Iowa State, I had never done anything like that before. And so everyone who's never done it is laser focused on making their cocktails and they forget the talking aspect of things. Right. And that is a huge score. And you just, oh, yeah. you've never done it before, but you just want to make sure you make those drinks right. Right. And that's why, like, if you, if you want to enter for something like the Worlds or any major competition, do the small ones too. Mm-hmm. Like do the Iowa State mixology competition. Do a local martini shake off for a for a fundraiser for mm-hmm. Half Life or mm-hmm. whatever. Do it because if you do that, you get th- those are the only way you're going to get used to that speed round. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And, and it, it yeah. really is just you know one it it it. Even those small local competitions where you're making a, a, a drink for judges that you know that have sat at your bar that you've built a rapport with, you know. Or they it, have it because they don't like you as a person, but they really like the neighboring stall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's you know, it's it all of those things are experience and a feather in the cap that just yep. gets you to that next spot. Yep. Um, I would say that I you know, I, we talked about this in the last episode. Uh, I was on, I world-class wasn't on my radar. I was not going to compete. I had done a couple of local competitions. Um, I was not going to do world-class. It was some friends that talked me into doing it that, that got me there. Um, I'm glad that they did, uh, because I had a great time and I met some dope people and, 
uh, you know, a lot of those relationships are uh, relationships I'm going to carry as long as I'm in the industry and beyond. Um, but yeah, it was, it was those local, those local um, competitions that got me in that mindset of thinking outside of the box and how to, uh, how to make yourself stand out in that crowd. Cause I mean, there was, a, my understanding is there was over 2000 people that entered uh, world class this year oh, uh, in the U S alone. So, right. you know, you whittle that down to the top 100 and you know you're you know how are you answering those questions how are you presenting your drink uh, on paper you know those are the things that you know you, you kind of learn along the way mm -hmm. so yeah i guess i didn't realize that that the first round was basically really based off of your writing capabilities of telling a story through word you know? yeah but now i know so hey maybe you should take a writing class you know that's why I, got I, I married i married a somewhat good writer so no, well that's i can't why, help you when you're there i don't have that's to why there. you use chat gpt at this point I mean, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so i mean like obviously this is a great experience right this has got to be up there for bartending experience that you've had right i mean absolutely I yeah i want to know like, what was the one thing that sticks out to you that happened, either good or bad, preferably bad, because it'd be hilarious to listen to. <laughs> but like, well, we already know what are some things like what are three things that went right? What are three things that went wrong? Obviously, you can't say that Amaro and Nino again. <laughs> like, sure. And like, how did the how did that um, add to or detract from your experience? Sure. So um, three things that went right that added to the experience. Um, getting to meet awesome people from all over the country, right? I, you know, I met some, I met people that, that I still talk to to this day. Um, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, two months later, I'm having conversations with, um, about doing, uh, about traveling to their cities and doing pop-ups, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, that's super cool. Um, uh, you know, there's a guy named Ian from, um, from Phoenix that, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out how I can bring him to Indy to do a super cool pop-up based on some like shared experiences and some shared likes that we like around music. Um, he and sure. I had a lot of, uh, a lot of really, uh, we had a really cool connection based on a lot of the music that we, that we like and, and we share. Um, I got to meet other people that, you know, I never would have met like John from, uh, from Bard Tenders. I listened to that podcast, but I got to meet him. Um, Jonathan Stanyard, uh, the bitter gringo who won this year. Um, I've been a follower of his on Instagram for a long time. Oh, nice. Um, so getting to, to meet this person who I've watched, you know, make content, uh, on social media and see kind of like where he's at. Um, one of the, one of the more underrated things about this was meeting people in the industry that weren't in the competition. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I'll say this, um, I'm going to New York at the end of September, um, just to go on a trip. I've never been, it's kind of a bucket list thing. Um, I get to go kind of like on a, a solo trip, no wife, no kids, no agenda, just go have fun. My wife's flipping me off in the background. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, I met the, uh, I, I got through, uh, through this, I got to meet the, uh, the U S brand manager for Mr. Black who happens to live in Brooklyn. He and, just moved uh, there. What's that? Steven or Stepan? Steven, yeah. Yeah, he, we, we met him when we went to San Diego. Yep. And, uh, and then when I went to Brooklyn Bar Convent last year, I, was, mm -hmm. I talked to him for a little bit. He goes, I'm actually moving here in the next couple of months. He's yeah. awesome. He's, he's, yeah. he's super so nice. Great. Yeah, he's awesome. You know, I, I met him uh, in the hotel lobby. We got to talking, um, had some dope conversations. Uh, realized we share the same birthday. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Um, I'm, you know, I posted, I was going to New York and he was like, he was like, Hey dude, uh, send me a calendar invite, man. Let's like, let's, you know, I want to make sure I'm here when you're here so we can go do some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, like those, like those kind of connections that, you know, like, yeah, I didn't win world class, but I met a lot of really dope people that, you know, these relationships, um, uh, will carry on well beyond that. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that like of the three things that I, I would say those kind of like the three things that were like that really made the experience um, that much better. 
Mm -hmm. things that took away from it um you know my uh my cocktail for kettle one um i thought was a delicious cocktail but i kind of fucked up and didn't realize that um like the garnish the garnish for that drink was a goat cheese and honey um foam okay and one of the you know one of the things in that foam is um is whole milk well, I kind of fucked up and realized they they weren't going to have, like, I had the pantry list, and they had heavy cream on that list, but they did not have whole milk. Uh, well, that foam doesn't work with, with heavy cream. It has to be milk. Right. Uh, so, you know, I tried to uh, adjust the cream, uh-huh. you know, with water and, and all of that to, to make it the, more of the consistent milk, and, and, my, and that kind of fell flat. Um, and that sucked. Oh, another, another so, cool thing uh, about that that happened through all this was um, just conversations I've had with other people like in the industry, like for help, like, like again, more like um, these kind of like revolutionary, like uh, bartenders Um, Mm -hmm. that foam in particular, I was really struggling to get like the prop, like the perfect ratio and reached out to the team at a schmuck that's going to be opening in uh, New York. And Juliet was like instrumental in helping me like dial in that, uh, that specific, uh, that foam. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, so, so failing on the, uh, on that, it kind of, instead of like really solidifying at the top and in like layering, it kind of started to bleed into the cocktail a little bit. Um, another thing that again, around the drinks was, uh, the cotton candy that I made for the Ron Zacapa. Mm -hmm. Um, I made that, I packed that inside of like an airtight container, uh, at that elevation, it does not matter. Uh, that cotton candy started to suck up and, and uh, become a little bit more solidified. So it wasn't as airy and it looked like shit. Oh, no. Um, but like, that's something like, how would you ever know that unless you fucking experience unless, it? Unless right. right. Dude. Hardcore research or. <laughs> there or was like four competitors it. that use cotton candy. Three of them brought a fucking cotton candy machine to Denver to make their cotton candy <laughs> on site. I mean. One I mean, didn't, I mean, I and like that was me. One. I feel like you could call ahead and rent one. Yeah, but there's pretty cheap ones out there. Like you can just, oh yeah, you, know, just, you can just buy one for. You can really you can buy you can buy a tabletop one for about thirty five bucks on Amazon. That's what yeah. that's what we used. Um, that's what I used for is that. Keeping me from having cotton candy at all times. Okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> Riley, Riley, go on Amazon. Seriously, shut up. It's... <laughs> hey Carl, go put. <laughs> Carl, take your headphones off and go pour a drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but no, so yeah, so that kind of failed. Um, I don't really have another another one that kind of really sticks out as being kind of like a a downer on the event. Um, sure. Those were like the two things like from the competition side that, I mean, I, I guess I could say I didn't make top 10. Right. Well, yeah. That sucks. Right. But, but I think you, I think you kind of realize why you didn't, right? Like, and you could take away those points of like, okay, well, I wasn't prepared enough or I oh, yeah. practice oh, yeah. enough, you know, like oh, yeah. little things oh, like yeah. that. Um, you know, don't be a hype man when you're, <laughs> when you're making drinks or something, you know, but. You know, one of the things to think about is the, the competitors that were there in the top 30, mm-hmm. uh, there were several that was not their first time um, being in the, uh, that final round. Right. Um, and it is, it, it really does boil down to it being a learning experience. Mm-hmm. You learn what the judges are looking for um, and you adjust. But Jonathan, who won, I think this was like his fifth year competing, is like a third year making it to the finals. Oh, wow. So, so I mean, I mean, all that experience is going to build up and you're just going to learn, like, okay, I need to exactly this. I need to tweak this. Yeah. Because one of the cool you... things is, you know, the, the world class organization as a whole. Mm-hmm. is amazing at providing feedback every step of the way. So even when you make, you know, you know, top 100, top 30, they're sending you feedback. That's so awesome. you can learn from that as you go. So it's like, you know, like my, like my feedback for top 100 was like, like you did not, you know, the idea of this drink is amazing. Cause again, that, you know, afterglow, which, you know, the drink, it's actually currently on my menu at my bar, um, the bar that I work at. It's an amazing drink. It's delicious. 
Nobody ever tasted that. Mm -hmm. Right. But the judges tell you, you know, you know, Hey, you know, you're, you know, the, how did, how did the brand knowledge, you know, like factor into this? Like you didn't mention the brand nearly enough. So, you know, like you kind of like every step of the way you're getting feedback that you can then apply it to the next round. Right. Um, and then, you know, subsequent, subsequently you can actually use that in, uh, additional competitions, you know, kind of as, as you, as you compete. Um, in other competitions or even world-class, you know, um, mm -hmm. I competed after world-class, I competed in a, in a local, uh, plan array competition and, uh, kind of, you know, I didn't win that either, um, which is starting to become a really shitty trend. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, the judge, you know, the, you know, one of the judges was like, Hey, you know, your brand knowledge was on point. Um, but that was something that I took from world class. Like, you know, my first round, like my brand knowledge was, was like, I told you all about the drink. I, I presented a, a, a really dope drink that was delicious that, you know, people had tasted and was really good. But, you know, how does, you know, the brand knowledge of bullet, you know, play into that? So. Yeah. And that's definitely on, I know in mine, I just basically kind of glanced over bullet using bullet. It was more of like the story of how I made the drink and had nothing really to do with bullet. Because bullet was not the intended bourbon of choice bourbon for that yeah. cocktail. But, but Hey, now we know, you know, so, but no, that's, and that's, that's what's kind of fun about those things too. Cause now, cause in theory, like people probably consider this the number one competition to enter and be in. So if you can, perfect and learn from that and apply it to everything else smaller no one's going to say you talk too much or you know right. too much you know or you're you're too skilled at this you know right you know but and when it comes down to it trying makes you a better bartender mm -hmm. oh Period. absolutely yep see now you're going to work on an amaro nino mojito and it's going to fucking <laughs> it's revolution it's going to fucking be dope as fuck well, what's funny about that is the drink that had no Nino in it was in, in, in the, in, in the line of, of cocktails as I was making them, it was like right next to the mojito. And that's how I fucked it up mm -hmm. is a, uh, a drink that I had on a previous menu at the bar I work at. That was kind of like a, a variation on a, uh, on a South side Ricky, uh, okay. you know, gin, lime, uh, mint, simple and uh, club soda. But mm -hmm. I had a shit ton of no Nino because I was putting a paper plane on the on the menu, and I was like, "How do I use this?" And right. so I did a riff on that where it was like gin, no Nino, uh, ango, uh, lemon, uh, mint, and club soda. Right. So great drink, super refreshing. Um, but I put that on I put that on the fucking menu and uh, for for speed round. And it was right next to the moji mojito, so I had two shaker tins with mint sitting in them. Oh, right, fuck. and that's how I did that. <laughs> I know exactly what happened and, and how it went wrong. Um, right. I just, yeah, fucked yeah. it up. So oh, now you know, right? So like, so the next day or whenever they announce, or later was later the night of night two, do they announce the top ten then? Yeah. So you finish, you finish, uh, you finish that round. Uh, they took us all to a dinner at a uh, at another bar. They announced the top ten, um, and then those those ten were basically summoned the next morning down mm -hmm. to the prep room, where they got the uh, the prompts for that for that day. Uh, right. So nobody knew ahead of time what those were. Uh, right. The only thing that we had going into the top thirty was, hey maybe you ought to watch these resources on uh diageo bar academy sure because they may come into play later and right. that was it that's interesting though like uh and then you were able to walk because the next day they did by the end of the next day you knew who, who won everything correct yeah yeah, yeah yeah so we did the the top 10 they did all theirs and that was in a whole another day of competition um, and then we had the, uh, the announcement that night at another dinner, um, at another hotel up on the rooftop. Um, you know, again, more like cocktail in, in, installations. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's just like a big giant party. That's awesome. Man, those fucking trophies of those people in the top 10 are holding on to are fucking huge mm -hmm. as fuck. 
that those are the biggest trophies they've done um, in the history of world class. Um, so you know, you see the pictures of them, and you're like, Jesus Christ! Um, yeah, they were big. I'd be like, how am I getting this back home in one piece? Right. <laughs> the the Johnny <laughs> Walker ones, yeah. A lot of people were back. like, how do I get these home in one piece? Yeah. That was a that I think a couple of people may have actually uh, gone to FedEx and like wrap them, box them, and ship them. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. We have we've done something similar with bottles. So. Yeah. When we went to San Diego, we shipped ourselves a bunch of alcohol bottles because I'm like, I am not checking because we did. We <laughs> sat down there, weighed everything, we did price comparisons, what would be cheaper to get another checked bag, like to buy another suitcase to check it. Yeah. Right. And then luckily in our hotel in L.A., we were right across from the post office, <laughs> so I just kept going back and forth buying shit, doing this, doing that. And then they goes, and she goes, "You got a lot of stuff." I go, "Oh, this will be the only time you ever see me." <laughs> <laughs> But whatever. Shipped a bunch of our dirty, dirty clothes, clothes. home with. <laughs> that was our. That was our stuffing. Instead of buying like you know a bunch of all the extra bubble wrap. We I just mean, we weren't gonna wear these clothes again anyway. Clothes, so just. So <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. But no, dude, that's awesome. I'm super proud of you. Like obviously, I wish we could have been there, but you know, hey, we I didn't deserve it, so you deserved it, and that's such an awesome experience and. It's something you're always going to remember, right? Like you said, you made lifelong oh, yeah. friends. You made these other connections that have nothing to not the, besides those 29 people. And now you can go more places throughout the United States and meet and say, hey, I'm coming in town. What can we do? Or do you got suggestions, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, exactly. And that, and that was kind of a, the fun part of it is, you know, competition aside, you meet a lot of really cool people. Um, yep. and, and those those relationships that you make, um, you know, those are relationships that you're going to keep, right? You know, outside of the competition, I, you know, I met some really cool people. Um, if I go, you know, if I go to Fort Lauderdale, I have somebody that I know that I competed with. If I go to mm-hmm. Charlotte, I have somebody I competed with. If I go to Phoenix, um, I have somebody that I competed with that I can go sit at their bar and I'm going to have a great time and know that, and, and know that I'm going to get, an amazing drink and have that, that it's that kind of like band of brothers kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and beyond that, it's, it's, you know, meeting the, uh, the different brand reps, right. Meeting somebody like Steven, um, you know, where, where we had a, we had a passing conversation, um, in the hotel lobby that led to conversations later in the weekend. Um, that have now led to uh, hanging out with him in New York when I go in September. Um, past, you know, other competitions, there's kind of, you know, that same thing, you know, where I, where I, you know, I'm working with uh, with a bar manager at another uh, at another bar about doing a pop up from Patron. You know, it's so all of these things, you know, you, we talk about um, you know that kind kind of like uh, camaraderie with uh, within the industry. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of those industries that people wouldn't think, but everyone's pretty awesome when you talk to them because at the end of the day, we all know we're just, it's just drinks. They're just, it's just alcohol at the end of the day that provides exactly. awesome experiences. Like and there, there's competition to a degree, but it's not, it's not competition in such a way that can't be friendly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just alcohol. I, and I think that that's best um, exemplified, Riley, in, you know, you go to the, uh, the individual challenges and every, uh, cont- like, uh, competitor is there cheering on the other person, yep. you right. know, nobody wants to see, you know, like nobody wants to see anybody fail. Everybody right. is there cheering them on. So like, I you want know, you to do less good than me, but I don't want you to do bad. <laughs> well, it's, it's even beyond that where it's like, I want you to, it's not so much. I want you to less, I want everybody just to fucking kick ass and mm-hmm. have a great right. time and and do well and have a great showing because i mean at the end of the day something like world class and there's a few other competitions that uh, that kind of rank up there uh, in a way that these are life-changing moments like you know um you know the bitter gringo is you know he's going to shanghai to compete against you know some of the best bartenders in the world mm-hmm. right you know like 
like what does that do for for you know you as an individual in terms of uh your career right like the 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 magnitude of something like world class you know you are the best bartender in the country like what does that do for for your career you know what does that do for you as a person like that's life-changing and the thing about if you then if you win that competition fuck like right you know i mean i won i was a little thing and i already can see the magnitude of what that's done for me i couldn't imagine winning best us and then going competing and if you end up winning world like right i mean you look at some of like the past winners of world like caitlin stewart um who is a uh, likable cocktails on TikTok and Instagram? Mm-hmm. You know, she won in 2017 or 2018. It was 2017. Like she won world, yeah. you know, and she's parlayed that into a career of, you know, being able to do, you know, cocktail tutorials on social media. And, you know, she's working with bars around the world doing a consultancy. Right. Mm-hmm. So she's traveling all over the world, getting to do really rad stuff. And it, it you know, does that happen if you're just, you know, a bartender in Vancouver, Canada? Right. Yeah. You know, no. Maybe not. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of really cool things that happen um, with that. So. Yeah. No, I mean, and plus now, I mean, like, so when I went to Brooklyn last year, I went to Clover Club and I'm sitting there and everyone at the bar is wearing wristbands. So, you know, everyone's at the bar convent, you know. Yeah. right now and then the guy i'm sitting next to we just end up talking to each other come to find out he, he was in the top 30 of last year's fucking u.s worlds and you know and and i'm just sitting there talking to him and then we hung out afterwards and you know we'll randomly talk to each other on social media just because we went and had some tacos together afterwards you know and stuff like that and yeah i mean i didn't it's not the first time i met him because i met him at uh i met him in phoenix a year before um randomly at a bar but, mm-hmm. you know, I spent a lot of time with Eric Castro from Bartender at Large. And, yep. Polite, mm-hmm. you know, he was he opened Polite for Provisions, was raided by Wolves, um, Gilly's House of Cocktails in San Diego. I, you know, we sat across each other at, uh, at that dinner at, uh, at Death & Co. You know, mm-hmm. we, you know, we sat next to each other at the bar at, um, at, uh, at Yacht Club and had, you know, yep. amazing conversations, you know. So, it, yeah, it's it's funny how this industry like just you know we we talk about hospitality so much in this industry but like um it goes so far beyond that with like the bartender to the guest and the hospitality and just that camaraderie um amongst each other Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's very much on display in competitions of this magnitude yeah absolutely bonding through shared experience or trauma bonding sometimes absolutely uh, for sure <laughs> <laughs> definitely trauma bonding <laughs> i'm not the only one that didn't complete speed round right i mean i've everyone i've ever talked to like that's the round that makes or breaks you like mm-hmm. like everyone can put up a really good one cocktail or whatever you know but it's it's that that's the round that i always heard will make or break you in this co- in that competition absolutely so but no well, Billy, it's awesome. And what we're looking forward to is November coming up. We're, Riley and I yeah. are going out to Indy. And I've already, I messaged you a couple of weeks ago. And oh, Riley yeah. are going to go to Indy to celebrate our five year wedding anniversary. Yep. Holy shit, we made it to five. Man. <laughs> and, uh, You're alive still. I know. <laughs> so, well, it's, we're not, it's not November yet. It's still a couple <laughs> months away. There's still room. But I know we're looking forward to. Well, spending time with you and I. Yes. And then we're going to go hit up your bar that Sunday night after the Colts beat the shit out of the Detroit Lions, hopefully. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> have a good time, you know? So, hell yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to it, guys. You know, five years. Um, you're almost there. You're almost <laughs> my there. Wi- my, wife, my wife, we just went to go pick up uh, my kid from, uh, from band practice, from marching band practice. Uh, we're coming up on 23 years. Damn. 
Congrats. So, That's awesome. You know, I, I think the big thing is I make her daiquiris all the time. So <laughs> keep, 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 her, keep her happy. All right. she, she's just drunk enough not to leave me at this point. <laughs> that's, that's what that, that's, that's what Carl, the yeah. motto. That's Carl's motto. I go after the first two years, she finally sobered up. I'm like, fuck, I'm too knee deep in this to actually leave and try again with someone else. <laughs> no, she's but, uh, but, my, my yeah. wife is a saint. I know I talked about this in the last episode. She puts up with a lot of shit and she's a she's an absolute trooper. So. So is mine. Yeah, so. I'm looking forward to having you guys out here, man. We'll host we'll host you out here in Indy. Um, we've got a lot of uh, really, really cool spots. Um, timing wise, I mean, m- you know, my bar closes at eight on Sundays, so we'll see if you guys make it up there because it is a trek from downtown. Um, but if not, I've got some spots for you guys. Well, I mean, if it's a one o'clock game, four hours, I'll put it out. Five, mm-hmm. we should be. We'll make it. I'll yeah, make it happen. you guys will make it. You guys will we'll make, make it happen. happen. Even if we have to leave the game early. No, don't we'll leave the game early. Don't don't be that fan. You, you stay till the end. <laughs> I'm not a Colts fan. <laughs> I'm the Colts fan. <laughs> so, but anywho, we can but, leave. Yeah, we can leave. <laughs> it's halftime. We can go. They're down by 33 points. They ain't coming back and winning. The only time we'd be down 33 and we'd stay is if the Vikings were playing because yeah. you never fucking know. Never know. No, but no, no. Anyway. They'll, be, they'll, they'll be up by 30. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so awesome, Billy. Well, hey, we appreciate you taking your time out on a Monday evening and talking to us about your fun experience. I know I, I think this is some, something other people would be interested in hearing because not a lot of people will get to do stuff things like this and they don't understand bartenders do things like right. this it's not every industry that you have like a like an international international competition mm-hmm. on who is the best or who has the potential to be the best yep there's yeah. definitely a uh there's definitely there is a depth de- net hulu <laughs> hulu documentary about world class wasn't it on prime it was on okay, it, it was on a, prime yeah it, yep you're on, you're right it's on prime it's about an hour <gasps> long we got that recorded. You said I was right. Whatever. They know you. Right? <laughs> Whatever. And, and a witness. And, and a witness. I'm drunk. Leave me alone. You can't cut that So out. am I. I <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cool documentary. I think it was 2022. They went and recorded it. Um, they follow three bartenders from three different countries. And that time the year was in Australia. And about that time, the world class for US, her name is Jess. She's out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and she works at Spoon and Sable. Um, you can see her a couple of times in the background as B roll, but mm-hmm. uh, it was interesting. You know, just kind of cool. Was, we... Jesse was one of my was one of my judges for oh, nice. Kettle One. Nice. Yeah, we went up to Spoon and Stable and and she was working that night and I'm like, Hey, you're just, and I told her, we heard of her because of the bartender at large podcast and she was super nice, but she was got closing she was out also busy, busy as fuck, which is fine, you know, but you know, she took at least two minutes to talk to us. And did you, you know, uh, when you were there, did you get to meet Marco? Um, he is on TikTok and Insta as, um, not just a, no, no, that's, um, uh, not barstool TV. Um, I, I don't think he was there or, I didn't know who, this was like three years ago okay. or two years. This is two years ago. So um, I didn't know who he was at that time. And the only reason I figured out he worked there is he did a video at Spoon and Stable making a cocktail. I'm like, oh, fuck, you actually work. Like, I didn't know what he worked at, you know, and, he, and he's like, yep, this is where I'm at. And so but he's, he's when, a- I, when I was there in April, I actually um, I actually sat at the bar in front of him and got to got to meet him and have like really cool conversation. Um, and we still talk to this day about, That's uh, awesome. you know, he's doing world class this year. So we, we're bouncing off idea, bouncing ideas off of each other, and just kind of having a cool. And world time. class for the uh, for this round is in when does that end? Is it uh, sometime in October? Yeah, that's what I thought. It was like yeah. it's plenty of time to to oh, throw yeah. something together last minute and try. Well, every... I, already have an idea which, <laughs> I already have an idea of which cocktail I'm going to submit. So yeah, now every... it's just articulating. It's funny because every round, like, there is so much time in between, but it's enough time for you to really um, overthink, overanalyze, and procrastinate. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But cool. 
Awesome. But uh, what's your uh, Instagram channel or Instagram? Yeah, it's uh, it's at Circle City Cocktails. Um, and if you want to hit me up, uh, I'm going to put together a group chat of um, just people that are interested in doing world class this year to bounce ideas off of people. Um, so hit go. me up on Insta. Uh, I'll add you to that. Um, and let's just talk. Let's bounce, bounce ideas off of each other. Um, I want to make, like, I mean, my goal has always been to kind of like push the Indianapolis um, like cocktail scene to like that next level. But let's, yeah. um, you know, I want, I really want to make this, uh, this already small world of, of like uh, bartenders even smaller. So mm -hmm. let's just, uh, yeah, let's network together. Um, be some dope people in that group for sure. Awesome. Well, the link for your Insta will be in the description of this podcast and go check them out if you're ever in Indy. And if you're in Indianapolis, November 24th, that is a Sunday because our anniversary is actually on the 23rd Saturday. So if you are in Indy and would like to hit us up, hit me up on our Instagram or Billy's and maybe we can get a couple of people together and do some fun things on a Sunday possibly. Hell yeah. If you're here, uh, if you're here on that Sunday, um, We'll all go to Commodore and uh, uh, do uh, Commodore is a is a really dope cocktail bar, um, kind of in one of the one of the neighborhoods of Indy that does a uh, industry night every Sunday. So there you go. Oh, nice. uh, that team is that team is amazing. So awesome, awesome. But well, thank you so much. You go enjoy your family time and go enjoy dinner, and uh, we'll talk to you later, guys. Y'all have a good night. You too, you bud. Too. Thanks, bud. Bye.